الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من اراد الاخره وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فاولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم الله تعالى has given us two blessings out of all of the blessings that he has given there are few ble- two blessings that I want to highlight today one <coughs> blessing is <coughs> the thoughts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given we can think about things we can have different plans in our heads animals cannot do that for example a person he thought that oh these birds they fly in the air so how can why can i not fly in the air so it's a thought right animals are restricted to whatever they have been given they don't think beyond their limits it's a blessing and the second blessing that is tied to that it is that people whatever they think they actually actually can practically implement that they can try to practically implement that in their lives so when they thought of that why cannot they fly in the air they actually decided that all right let's come up with something that we can actually fly and there was a person who actually made huge wings and they put their wings in their in their arms and jumped off from a higher place and you know tried to fly and he actually fell down right we you know if you have read the history of aviation that's how it started and then it moved on and step by step the whole aviation science it came into place right in fact one of my friends who is a pilot he says that it's a very common terminology that they use is that the history of aviation is written in blood why because somebody passed away somebody died right and then they found out that oh this there is some flaw in this science so let's change this so somebody had to actually die in order to improve their technology but subhanallah this is the power that's a blessing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that in reality you can you can do you can think about a lot of things and you can actually practically implement that thing in your life as well huge blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of the cars that we drive all of the amazing you know technologies that we have the cell phones that we have the internet that we have it is a thought subhanallah today you have you know this power of internet such a powerful thing subhanallah I mean it can be used and it can be misused but it's a powerful thing there nobody can deny that cell phones is such a powerful thing as a phone in your pocket subhanallah you know when i was in my university cell phone had just come in and you know people they would they used to take their cell phones in their hands if they had a cell phone so that everybody knows you know what i have a cell phone and today everybody you know subhanallah even kids have cell phones was such a powerful thing that anybody can call you from any part of the world and it rings right in your pocket amazing these are blessings my friends and as i said that these thoughts can be good thoughts and it can be bad thoughts <coughs> the things can be used in a beneficial way or they can be misused right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants that these this blessing that we have been given it is used in the right way just like any other blessing the blessing of the eyes for example it is a blessing we can use that to look at beautiful children 
to look at the skies, look at the flowers, look at the mountains, look at the greenery, look at the Qur'an. Right? They are, they are the good uses of the eye, but it can be misused. It can be misused in looking at the women walking around, in looking at pornography on the internet, in looking at all of that filth that's out there, watching Bollywoods, Hollywoods, dramas, Pakistani, Indian dramas, all of what people are doing in their houses. This is the misuse of the blessing of the eye. So any blessing can be used and it can be misused. Just like that, this blessing of thinking, thoughts, wishes, desires can be used and it can be misused. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that you be used this blessing of the thoughts that we have, the wishes that we have. We should have good aims, good goals, good wishes, good desires. This is always number one. We plan something and after that, after we do the planning, then we act according to what our goals and aims are. And the ayat that are recited is exactly that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man arad al akhirata. Whoever makes an irada that he is going to work for an akhirat. He thinks about that he is going to, to work for his akhirat. He is going to work for his hereafter. He is going to prepare for his grave. He decides. Number one, he thought. He thinks. This, these are his thoughts. Man arad al akhirata. And number two, wa sa'alaha sa'yaha. And then he makes an effort for that. And of course, everything has to have a base, which is iman. Wa huwa mu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fa ula'ika kana sa'yahum mashkura. Then his efforts will be appreciated. Yani, in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him, will appreciate his efforts. And in, <coughs> Allah ta'ala will help him, help him in getting what he is after. A beautiful verse and a very powerful verse. And every verse of the Qur'an has a message. Allah Ta'ala has not given us Qur'an just for anything. There is a reason that every verse is given to us. And there is a message in this ayat. What is that? Change your thought process. Everybody must change their thought process. Irada, wishes, desires should be for akhirat. And then make an effort based on that. Either... <coughs> Apologies, I'm, I've been talking a lot and subhanAllah, you know, I have a very itchy throat. I wish that, you know, subhanAllah, it, it's hurting, but I still want to talk, so then maybe somebody's life may change, somebody's irada, somebody's thoughts might change. So, <clears throat> so Allah Ta'ala wants that our thought process change, changes. And honestly, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all what he did was he changed the thought process. That's all what he did. Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, were the same people, same blood, same heart, same lungs, same body, same eyes, same limbs. What changed was the thought process. Thought process changed, absolutely. This is what Prophet worked on. <coughs> These were the same Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een that were willing to kill each other for small little petty things. Small <laughs> petty things. Then why did the other person's hand cross its boundaries and came into my land? This much thing and subhanAllah they will go and will start fighting and not only they will have a fight between argumentation and a physical fight but the whole tribes will come in and they will fighting. The tribes will start fighting for a number of years. Killing each other. This small little thing. And the same were the people, same people. When Prophet ﷺ gave them the message of Islam, what did he change? The way that they were thinking. Now they were preferring others over their own selves. We know the story, beautiful, that it was battlefield. And one of the Sahabi, radiallahu anhu, he was on, his, on the verge of his death have just finished the battle. You just imagine they were fighting with so much, so much effort that they had exerted in their battle. Hot days. Thirsty, thirst at its peak. At its peak, at the time of the death, when people are in, at the, 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 the death, at the time of the death, people are thirsty even more. Just imagine, reflect. And then he is calling out for water. He's saying, oh water, I need water. Can somebody give me water? And this, another sahabi whose responsibility in the battlefield was just to feed the people who were thirsty. 
And he hears this call of the Sahabi that he is calling for water. And he goes to him as soon as he is about to drink water. Suddenly this Sahabi, he hears another call from another person, another Sahabi, water, water, water. At that moment he says, looks like that this person is more in need of water than myself. Why don't you go and feed him first? Subhanallah. This Sahabi who is feeding water goes to that second person, that second Sahabi. And as soon as he is about to drink water, he hears a third call. Somebody is saying, water, water, water. He's also at the verge of his death. And this second Sahabi says, looks like this person is more in need of water than myself. Why don't you go and feed him first? And this Sahabi who is feeding water goes to the third person, third Sahabi. By the time he reaches, he passed away. He came, comes to the second Sahabi, by the time he reaches him, he had passed away. He comes to the first one, he had passed away. All three Sahaba, they gave their life, but even at that moment, they were preferring the needs of the others over their own needs. What changed? Same with the people killing each other, a few years ago. The whole thought process changed. The way that they were thinking. You know, they were not being selfish anymore. There was no nafsi nafsi anymore. There was no me, myself anymore. There were others, other people, they were thinking about others because they were doing that for their akhirat. They knew that this is something that's going to get their give them their akhirat. The whole process was akhirat. Man arad al akhirata. Their whole wishes, their desires become, became akhirat and not this dunya anymore. This sahabiya. Um Sulaim radiallahu anha. Her husband, he had to go to a travel and their son was sick. Their boy was sick. And he had to go, he had to travel. And the day that he was to return, subhanallah, the son passed away. The son passed away. Imagine today are we people that anybody dies in the family and here are we beating and you know pulling our hair, tearing our clothes. Jahiliyat. Honestly, this is Jahiliyat. Ignorance. This is from the time of Jahiliyat. This is not Islam. Still we are doing it. Somebody passed away in the, in, in, in the family of one of my friends here in the UK just like three days ago, four days ago. And he said that he went to that place and he said, you know, all of these women were beating themselves, beating their faces, pulling their hair. And I said, Ajeeb, I said, you know, where are we? Are we still jahil? In this 1435 Hijra, saying that we are Muslims. The son passes away and now it's a time for her husband to come back home. Look, what does she do? Instead of beating, these were the same women who were beating themselves a few years ago. She is the mother. Mother. Her son passed away. And the, the son is on, on, on the bed. Her, his dead body. And her husband is about to come. Now she is thinking what to do. She covers her son with a piece of cloth. And when the husband comes in, he, she doesn't even tell him that the son has passed away. Because Why? Because he, he is her husband. And he, she does not want to give him the news, the sad news, the first news that he, uh, the first news that she gives is a sad news. She doesn't want to do that. Not only that, she adorns herself, makes herself up. When, when he comes, he asks, how is the son? She said, he is in peace. He is in peace. And not only that, he, she welcomes him and, and they have relations. Can you imagine? Have relations. Look, she's a mother. Imagine the heart of the mother whose the, the dead body of her son is in the is on the bed. In the house, not in the graveyard, in the house. And just to comfort her husband at that time, she is having relations with him. And after that they were over, she then asks a question to her husband. What do you think about somebody who gives her gives us an amanat, a trust? And he decided he wants to take it back. He said, oh, of course, we will give the amanat back. It's not ours, it's theirs. And she said, our son was the amanat from Allah. He was a trust that was given to us by Allah. Allah Ta'ala took him back. Allahu Akbar Kabira. We can say it very easily if we reflect and if it happens in our family or somewhere, then we will feel it. What does it mean? Allahu Akbar Kabira. The husband gets upset. He said, what? You know, didn't, why didn't you tell me before? And then, you know, they buried the son, went to the Prophet ﷺ and told him the whole story. 
And he made a dua for them. Then may Allah put barakat in your relationship, your, your relations last night. And Allah Ta'ala gave them a child and he became the hafiz of the Qur'an. But subhanallah, what happened? What is, dif- what is the difference? These women wailing, shouting, screaming, pulling their hair in the time of jahiliyyat. And here are these women, same women being so patient. The thought process changed. They were patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they knew that they are here in this dunya for the akhirat. That's what they were doing. Man arad al akhirata wa sa'alaha sa'yaha. They were making an effort for the akhirat. These are the Sahaba, right? This is who they were, thinking about Akhirat. Their concern was Akhirat. A Sahabi comes to the Prophet ﷺ, he was sad, very worried. What do you think if anybody comes to you with a worried face? Can you guess what is his issue? Job, sickness, what else? Is there a third thing? <laughs> Something like that, isn't that? Oh, I'm sad, I'm worried. This Sahabi comes, what do you think? What, why was he worried? Prophet ﷺ asked him, what happened? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I love you so much that my day starts by looking at your blessed face. And I'm thinking, Ya Rasulullah wasallam, that a day would come that we will all go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be in higher ranks of paradise. And I will be in somewhere, in, in some low rank. How, I'm thinking that how I will be able to look at you in paradise. That's why I'm worried. Subhanallah. Ajeeb. He came with so much talab, so much passion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibra'il alayhi salam. He came with ayat. وَمَنْ يُتِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا That whoever obeys Allah and, his mess- and the Messenger, then they will be in the company of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed. Yani prophets, yani siddiqeen, the truthful, the shuhada, the martyrs, and the, and the righteous, and what a beautiful company. Allahu Akbar. Yani he's saying, don't worry, you will be with the Prophet. You will be able to look at him there as well. But look at the worries, the concerns that these people had. Every time that they would slip, they would go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, I did this thing wrong. Ya Rasulullah. They were in Sahabiya, radiallahu anha. She came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was sitting amongst the Sahaba. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting amongst the Sahaba like in a gathering like this, and a Sahabiya comes and she breaches all the adab, comes and stands right in the front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imagine, it's not it's not normal. And she said to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, I committed zina, punish me. I committed zina, please punish me. Prophet ﷺ turned his face towards the right. Didn't, was not even looking at her. She came all the way from the right and says to Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I said something. I committed zina, zina punish me. Prophet ﷺ turned his face towards the left. She came all the way towards the left and said, Ya Rasulullah, I committed zina, punish me. SubhanAllah, here are people trying to hide their false and you know trying to run away from the dunya and doing whatever they feel like and here are sahaba and sahabiyat they're so concerned oh i committed i i i i fell it's not that i'm an angel i'm a human being i committed a, a, a fault but now what is the irada irada the thought the desire is that i want that all my sin is is washed away in this dunya so that when I die, I go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a pure state of heart. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when she said the three, it, the three times, he did not have any choice. But he was a qadi, he was a judge as well. He was the amirul mu'mineen also, right? He did not have any choice. He could not make the shariat by on, by, on his own self. So he asks this woman, he says, he asks that, do you think that you are expecting a child based on what you did? And she says, yes, I'm expecting. So Prophet wasallam says to her, go and once you deliver the baby, then you come to me again. Nine months later, Prophet wasallam is again sitting in the masjid, this woman comes. With the, with the baby in her hand. Ya Rasulullah, remember me? 
I came to you nine months ago, you asked me to come back after I delivered the baby, here is the baby, Ya Rasulullah, take the baby, punish me. <laughs> Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, look, this baby needs, needs you, you have to feed him. So you go feed the baby, and if once the baby is not in need of you anymore, then you come back to me. Two years later, this woman comes again. And this time she had the baby in her, in her lap, and a piece of bread in the other hand, and says to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, look, this baby can eat. He doesn't need me anymore. Ya Rasulullah, take the baby punishment. Allah Akbar. Almost three years. Just imagine the state of the heart of this woman. She must not be sleeping at night properly. Because her whole concern was that I want to be punished and washed in this dunya so that I go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a pure state. Subhanallah. And now Prophet has no option, no option left. He was giving her all of the relaxations that he could do within the bounds of shariat. That's what he was doing. Now he did not have any option anymore. So he ordered that this woman was a married woman. And she committed that act. And she said that she be stoned to death. And he asked the sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in to go and stone her to death. So they did whatever and she passed away. And when she passed away, and Prophet ﷺ got to know about that she passed away, you know, he said, I'm going to go and read her janaza. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you are going to pray janaza of a zaniya? And he was asking a question, he said, Ya Rasulullah, she committed zina, you're going to go and read her janaza? Prophet ﷺ got so upset, his blessed face became red. And he had his cloak, he dragged his cloak on the ground, he said that she has done such a tawbah that if this tawbah had to be distributed amongst the people of Medina Munawra, it would have been enough for all of them. Allah. Subhanallah. This is what these people had become. Their thought process changed. They were called Muslims. What are we called? What should we be called? This is a question. Either they should be given another name, like some superlative degree of Muslims, or if they were Muslims, then who are we? Are we Muslims? What are we doing? Our whole thought process is just dunya, desires, fulfilling our desires. All what is on our head is eating, drinking, relations. Subhanallah. Hollywoods, Bollywoods, surfing channels, YouTubes, Facebooks, cell phones, smartphones, data all you can eat. Subhanallah, all day long on the, on, on, on the Facebook, changing out your status. I'm in my toilet now. It's the sun is out, now it's cloud, it's raining, it's sun, it's dark, it's light. It's subhanallah, no maqsad of life. Right, this is what we are doing. Browsing, chatting, social networking sites, you know, chatting, flirting with girls, flirting with boys. SubhanAllah. You go to a fatwa website, ask Imam, and you will be amazed the types of fatwa that are asked right that, that are being asked right now. Oh, I was looking at a girl and I I, I looked you know, I saw her naked, is my, this, my budu broken or not? This is what people are doing. Shame on us, honestly. Shame on us. Those were Sahaba, radiallahu anhu majma'een. And here are we. They had the same rub that we have. They're going to the same place where we are going. We all are going to be raised up on the day of judgment, the same day of judgment. Subhanallah, where will we end? Honestly, we have to ask this question. Where will we end? Are we Muslims, really Muslims? Subhanallah, I mean, our, our people take bath and they for their self-development. There are some women, they complain. They say, you know, Subhanallah, our husband, this, this relation is so much on the head of our husbands that we, you know, please let our husbands go and marry for the second time. We don't care about that. Because they don't even consider us as human beings. They feel that if they are robots, 
that they have to be with them every single day because that's what they are thinking. There's nothing else. Because they watch all of this filth all day long, the billboards, <laughs> these girls walking on the street, the internet, the YouTubes, all of that filth that they watch on the Hollywood, Bollywood, it gets so much on their head and they go and do all of that with their wives. And they are wondering, my please, you know, forgive us. We are humans, you're not robots, we have emotions, we get tired, we get sleepy. And then if they don't respond, you know, for whatever natural human reasons, of course, then they'll think about all of this hadith. <coughs> Angels curse you all night if you don't do that, subhanAllah. What about the Qur'an, the ayat of the Qur'an when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Treat with them in the best of the ways. What about that hadith that خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ That best amongst you is the one who is best with his, with his wife. What about that? Where are those Qurani ayat and ahadith that talks to us as husbands to be best with our wives? What about the seerat of the Prophet Where is the sunnah, that sunnah that Prophet ﷺ was, was being the best with his wives? The wives are getting upset at some things and here is Prophet of Allah وسلم, coming and you know rubbing the, uh, the ears, the earlobes of his wives and trying to give her comfort. Where are those sunnahs? What are we? Who are we? Honestly, this is on our head. Three things. Eating, drinking, and relations. And because of what we see, what we watch, what we are, what we, what we are, the environment that we all are in. So please, let's change our thoughts. Let's change our wishes. Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anum they did not use to wait for the night because they are going to have relations. They used to wait for the night and so that they can stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَحْجَعُونَ وَبِالْأَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ They used to sleep very little at night and at the time of the hajjud they would make istighfar despite of the fact that they were up all night praying, not crying, not sinning. They used to wait for the day so that they can go out and serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for anything else. So we cannot live like this, my friends, my elders. We are all dying. We are all going, going to go into our graves very soon before that we will even realize. Honestly, death is round the corner. You know, one of my friends here in Coventry, in Birmingham, he... His cousin passed away, he was 20 something, 26, 27, something like that. He had like a double, triple heart attack in one night, he passed away. Three small little babies, children. Death doesn't look at that, oh you are 70 only, then I'll come to you. Death is around the corner, death comes to anybody. My own friends, subhanAllah, we passed away when I was in the university, my class followers. It doesn't look at people's ages. It comes to anybody. And it is coming in any way at the end of the day. Irrespective of what age does it come. So we have to prepare for our akhirat. We have to change our wishes, our desires. Please. You know, subhanAllah, people come for talks. I don't know what niyat people come to, or come with. What is the niyat? What is, why are you all sitting here? MashaAllah, I'm sure that there are many other people who come here and talk. Why do we go to talks? I mean, it is just that we'll enjoy another talk, we'll sit, or it is for something else. Please, we need to sit with the intention that whenever somebody comes and he delivers a speech, we should sit with the intention that I'm going to take every single thing that he's going to speak in, our, in my life. That should be the niyat. Otherwise, subhanAllah, we're all wasting our time. I'm wasting my time, you're wasting your time, honestly. We're all wasting our time. Our need should be that every single word that is spoken is like a prescription drug for me. I have all of these spiritual illnesses and I want to take this medicine that is being said. You know, words that are spoken by the Mashaikh, they are not just random words. They are the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in reality are the prescription drug for our spiritual illnesses. So we should take every single word as, as a cure. You know, some don't even go for topics. Don't some people say, oh, you know, if you tell them there's a bayan going on, what's the topic? We're not going for the topic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has repeated one topic over and over and over and over and over again in the Qur'an. Right? Even if you know a lot about all of these topics, still go. Don't go for the topic. Go with the intention. Then inshallah ta'ala there will be something that will come out of his tongue that will, become, that will help me inshallah in changing my lifestyle. So please... We have to change ourselves. 
We are in a very strange state as an ummah. I go into all of these countries, Muslim countries, non-Muslim countries, look into the Muslim communities and literally my heart breaks. Heart breaks, honestly. You ask a person, you know, a young person, what is the goal of your life? Maqsad kya zindagi ka? What is your goal of your life? And honestly, I don't think that any of our youth has any maqsad whatsoever in, our, in their life. No maqsad. Right? They're clueless. What are they doing with their life? And even you, if somebody has a maqsad, the maqsad will be college, unis, that's it. A car, a BMW, a Mercedes, a three-bedroom flat, that will be possibly his maqsad. Oh, I'm saving money so that I can buy a new car. Then who will ask? You tell me honestly, amongst this, you know, don't tell me, just think, talk to yourself, tell yourself. Who amongst us as has this maqsad, this goal of life that I want to die a good death. That's the whole maqsad of my life. That's why I'm in this dunya. That's what I'm preparing for. I tell, answer this question to yourself. If you are, the goal of your life is this, I congratulate you, honestly. May Allah bless you. But, I know that majority of our maqsad is not this. All what we are thinking from the morning to the evening is what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, and how, I mean, you know, which woman I'm going to mar- get married if I'm not married yet. And uh, subhanAllah again, if we are not married, we are fulfilling our desires by ourselves, by looking at all of that filth, which is haram, sinning. And then people who are married, you know, they're all but they're thinking about their wives, and that's it. And still subhanAllah flirting with other women as well, having cheating on their women, and their women cheating on their husbands, and this is all what's going on, this is in the head of the people, and that's it. People are married, thinking about second marriage, people are two married, thinking about the third marriage, there's so many people like that. How many of us are actually preparing for our grave? Who, are, who is that man? I want, still want to find that person. Please, we need to change ourselves. And how can we, our thoughts be changed? Our thoughts can be changed by sitting in the company of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ayat that my friend recited in the beginning when he was introducing that, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, ittaqu allaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and be with the, with the truthful people, be with the righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we hook ourselves up to the people of Allah. That is that cure to change our thoughts. If we want to change our thought process, we need to be in the suhbat of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a cure for our, this disease of having no thoughts or only having worldly thoughts or having bad thoughts or ill thoughts. You know, in the company of the people of Allah, even the thoughts of the animals change. The proof is Qur'an. You know, Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam, he was the prophet and Allah ta'ala gave him the kingdom over all makhluk. And once he was sitting and oh, he had called for all of the makhluk and he found that there was one bird called Hudhud, it was not there. So he said, where is Hudhud? Why is it not here? So, it, <laughs> and he said, if, I, if it is absent for no reason, I'm going to kill the Hudhud. So Hudhud comes. He said, where were you? He said, you know what? I was so upset because I found out that there was a queen, there is a queen <laughs> who is worshipping somebody other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I got so upset. And I was there trying to find out about that, what are they doing? Look up, Hudhud is so concerned that there's somebody worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Same Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam. He was going out with his army, with his people, with his, all of the, the, the troop. And there were ants on the floor. And when the ants saw that Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam and his army is coming, he, the leader ant, the lead ant, she said to the fellow ants, let's go back into our houses. Why? Because it may be a possibility that unintentionally Sulaiman and his, and his army would crush us. Allahu Akbar. An ant taking care of the fellow ants. Sayyidina Sulaiman heard that, he started smiling. And he, made, he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing that he was given, that he could understand what these insects were saying. But subhanAllah, look how and taking care of the fellow ants, just because of being in the sobat of the people of a person of Allah. And here are we, how many of us actually take care of our other fellow human beings? Here is an ant taking care of the fellow ants. Here are we pulling each other's legs, jealous, arrogant, harming, hurting. Ajeeb, this is our state. I, I was working, I mean I've been working, you know, just 
not until very long ago, I mean, two years ago I, I retired, you know. But some Allah, Muslim brothers, you know, they were so jealous just for the very fact that one of, of, of another Muslim brother has, prom- has gotten promotion. And now they will go to the manager and will tell them, you know, all of the wrong things that to, as to what that he does. Right, you know, subhanAllah, it happens in every organization. I'm sure that you might be experiencing that as well. This is, and we call ourselves human beings. They are ants better than us. But what changed their thought? The, what, the thing that changed their thought was the person of, of being in the sobat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person of Allah. So please, change your wishes, your intentions. <coughs> every single thing that you do, please do it for the sake of Allah. Man arad al Let's do irada of akhirat. سَعْيَهَا And then make an effort for that. Let's change our thoughts. The one Sahabi radiallahu anhu, he was fighting in a battle, and after the battle was over, you know, they gathered all that booty of war, mali ghanimat. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnah was that he would distribute that booty of war amongst the people who have fought. So he sent his share, this Sahabi is here to him, but this Sahabi, he refused to take it. And, you know, Shar'an, he should have taken it because Prophet ﷺ had sent it. So Prophet ﷺ called him. He said, why did you refuse? So he said, Ya, ya Rasulullah, mali hadha qataltu Ya Rasulullah. Is it for this that I, I fought for? Did I, for? did I fight for booty of war? So Prophet ﷺ, despite of knowing, he asked him, you know, why did you fight? He said, Ya Rasulullah, shahadat. I fought for shahadat. I didn't fight, fight for booty of war. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you, your wish is true, then Allah Ta'ala will make your wish come true. If your wish is true, then Allah Ta'ala will make your wish come true. In another battle, SubhanAllah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was serving the people after the battle was over. And he was there with many Sahaba of God, Shaheed. And so suddenly what Prophet Sallallahu looks at, that this Sahabi is also Shaheed. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was looking at him with awe. And Sayyidina Jibra'il Alaihi Salaam came. Allah Ta'ala sent ayat. Min al-mu'mineen rijalun. Sadaqu ma'ahadullah alayhi. That from the believers there are men of Allah. That they have made their covenant true with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From men whom man qada nahbahu. From amongst these people are those who have fulfilled their obligations. Wa min hum man yantadir. And there are many others who are waiting. And their wish has never changed. Their wish has remained akhirat. Allahu Akbar Kabira. So please, a lot of Islam needs to be done to correct our wishes. A lot of Islam. And honestly, I, we need to force ourselves initially. Shuru may we have to do mujahida. Initially we have to force, always think, you know, what am I doing? What, why I am doing what I am doing? I am sitting here, why I am sitting? Why I am giving you a bayan? Why are you all sitting? You should ask this question to yourself. Why am I sitting? This must be a reason for sitting, isn't it? You go back home and now you will think of doing something. Why am I doing what I am planning to do? Right? I'm, I want to play with my children. Why am I am playing with my children? Right? It's a sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam to, to take care of the children. That's why. Think. Please force yourself to think about everything that you do. I'm with my wife. Why am I with my wife? I am, I get up and go to my work every single morning. Why do I go to work every single morning? Why am I eating? Think. You know the reason that we don't think, that's why we even forget to say Bismillah at the start. That's why even we forget to say Alhamdulillah at the end. Because we are not thinking. We are like animals, eating, you know, whatever, fill our stomach. Somebody told a person who used to eat a lot, you know, it's a sunnah is, Prophet Muhammad said that, Eat one, one, leave one third for food, one third for drink, and one third for air. <laughs> and he said, you know what, I can't do that. And I fill my stomach, the, the water it finds its place itself. <laughs> and he said, air, subhanAllah, who cares for air? That's what we do, subhanAllah, so eat until here, subhanAllah. <laughs> this is our state, eating, eating, eating. That's why we are, mashallah. Big tummies, one big ab. Huh? <laughs> People are trying to make abs and we have one big ab, mashallah. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, once he was making tawaf, and he, find a per- he found a man who had one big ab. 
He had a stick in his hand. You say, no, Omar, you say, no, Omar. Mashallah, he hit his tummy with a stick. He said, it would have been better that it was on somebody else, not you. And you are a believer. Come on. That's because we are eating, drinking. That's all what we are thinking about. We have to force them. Why are we eating? I'm eating so that I can get strength out of this, so that I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that I can... I can, you know, fulfill the responsibilities that I have. This is why I'm eating. Please make, have niyat of everything that you do. Why am I sleeping? I'm sleeping because so that I can be fresh for tomorrow morning, inshallah. So that I can restart my work serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be the niyat of, of, of sleeping. Every single thing should have niyat. You know, subhanAllah, we have to, we have to force ourselves from one extreme to the middle. So how about some of the Sahaba they go to the other went to the other extreme? Three three Sahaba came to the Prophet sallallahu and they the Prophet was not there. They asked one of the Ummahat al Mu'mineen that how is the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So she told him, you know, Prophet he worships this much, he sleeps this much, and then he gets up in the morning and he worships this much. This is how much he fasts and all of that. So they thought this is not enough. Look at their thought process. From one extreme, it actually went to the other extreme. They thought it is not enough. So then they started thinking, oh, he is the prophet. Right? He is the messenger of Allah. If he doesn't do enough, then he is okay. But we are normal ummatis, we are normal human beings, it's not enough for me. So one of them said, you know, I'm not going to sleep anymore at night. The other said, I'm not going to eat anymore, I'm going to fast, consecutive fast. And the third said, I'm not going to get married anymore. I'm going to dedicate my life for, for Allah. No marriage. Prophet Sallallahu he found this out, he got upset, he came, he said, you know what, I sleep and I, I, I pray. I, also, I fast and I eat and I've gotten married as well. You know, what are you talking about? إِنَّ لِنَفْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقًّا وَإِنَّ لِأَهْلِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقًّا وَإِنَّ لِدَيْفِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقًّا You know your family has a right over you. Your, your nafs has a right over you. Your guests have a right over you. Why are you doing that? This is not deen. Come back in the middle way. But look, imagine their thoughts. Yani they were thought, thinking about something else. They have to be forced back to the middle way. And here are we on the other extreme. So please, my friends, be become people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll just finish with a couple of stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned two women in the Qur'an. Two women in the Qur'an. One woman is the wife of Fir'aun. The most oppressive person on the face of the earth. The most tired man. His wife. She was literally a beauty queen. She was the chosen, a chosen woman by Fir'aun. He made her his wife. And she was in luxuries when she did not have iman. She was enjoying every single blessing of the dunya. Allah Ta'ala gave her tawfiq, she accepted iman, she accepted Islam on the hands of Sayyidina Musa alayhi When she accepted Islam, all of her thought process changed. She was thinking about dunya, now her concern was akhirat, man arad al akhirat. Fir'aun got to know about, long story short, Fir'aun got, Fir'aun got to know about that she accepted Iman. So he said, I'm going to torture you, leave Iman. She said, I'm not going to leave Iman. You do whatever you want to do. Iman has now entered my heart, and that's it. If it means leaving the dunya, that means, it means leaving the dunya. I don't care about it anymore. He tortured her. It is written in the books that actually he made her leave the palace and right in front of the palace he packed her hands and her feet with nails, took off her clothes, and he humiliated her in front of everybody. Imagine a woman who is a woman of modesty. Not only that she was a woman, she was a queen. Imagine, reflect on this on her state. Her clothes taken off, packed, the, 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 nail, the hands and the feet were packed with nails. And her face was turned toward the palace that she, so that she's looking at the palace that when I did not have Iman, you know, I did not believe in Allah Ta'ala as my Rabb, when I was taking Fir'aun as my Lord, this is what, uh, where I was and now I am this, this day. And she was a heavy stone, a huge heavy stone was to be put on her, on her chest. At that moment, what did she say? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has quoted her dua in the Qur'an. 
Allah subhanahu wa She said, Ya Allah, I don't care about this palace. My thought is not about enjoying this dunya and sacrificing iman. Rabbibni li intaka baitan fil jannah. Ya Allah, I want that you make a house for me in paradise near you. This is my wish. This is my desire. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil jannah. Ya Allah, I want a house near you in paradise. That's all what I want. But Ya Allah, I'm a human being. They are torturing me. I don't know what will happen to me. It is a possibility that because of excessive torturing, what if I lose my iman? She made a dua, Ya Allah, wa najjini min fir'aun wa amalihi, wa najjini min al-qawm al-zalimeen. Ya Allah, you please save me from fir'aun and his actions, and you save me from these oppressive people. Ya Allah, please help me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took her soul away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took her soul away. And it is written that in the paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make her the wife of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar kabira. Subhanallah. Look at the thought that changed. Allah ta'ala has quoted her thoughts in the Quran. I want parent, a place in paradise. I don't want this palace. I want a palace near you, ya Allah, in paradise. Another story is the wife of Sayyidina Imran alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Imran alayhi salam was a caretaker of the masjid. And he passed away when his wife was expecting a baby. So the wife of the Sayyidina Imran alayhi salam, she wanted that I give birth to a male child. To a boy. Why? What do you think? Why do we want? Why do we want male children? Huh? That they will take care of me when I become old. Right? Or, inheritance doesn't go out of the family. Right? This is why we want male children. And subhanAllah, people have male children. I've seen these male children, these boys, become so oppressive, become so rebellious, that these people are thinking, my God, then I wish that I had not a, I, I had not a child. And subhanAllah, some people have only daughters, and they are so blessed as I, I saw, I, I know a person, he had nine daughters. And he himself used to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made my son-in-law the coolness of my eyes. Subhanallah. Jahiliyat. Children, male children, so that budhabe ka sahara ban mera. This is our thought, this is our wishes. Why does she want a boy? Ya Allah, Rabbi inni nazartu laka ma fi batni muharrara fataqabbal minni. Ya Allah, I make a vow that whatever is in my womb, not a child yet, what's in my womb, Ya Allah, I dedicate it for your service, please accept from me. Yani my, I will dedicate my child. Ya Allah, it's, it's not me, I don't need it. Ya Allah, if I, I wish that I give birth to a boy so that I will just give it this boy to your service. I don't want it to be the, my care in my old age. The, the mother of Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when the boy was 10 years of age, 10 years, how old is this boy? 5. He's 12. 2 years younger. Look like he's 10 years of age. When 10 years, she brings Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Ya Rasulullah, here is he in your, for your service. You accept please. A mother bringing him herself. You please take, to take, to take him, he is in your khidmat. Allahu Akbar kabira. Look at the thoughts that these people had. Rabbi inni nazartu laka ma fi batani muharrara fataqabbal minni. Ya Allah, please accept. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, subhanAllah, he accepted. But guess what? When the child was born, it was not a male child. It was a girl. Rabbi inni wada'atuha unsa. Ya Allah gave birth to a girl. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I know. Allahu a'labu bima wada'at. Wa laysa dhakaru kal unsa. I know what you have given birth to. Male are not like females. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, so what? Can't females, can't, can't girls be accepted for the service of Allah? Indeed they can be. Girls are a blessing. Why can't they be accepted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقُبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah ta'ala accepted that girl. Allah ta'ala gave, so she was named Maryam. And subhanallah, Maryam alayhi salam, she gave birth to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. 
Our mashayikh have written, and not only that, once you know, Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam, who was the uncle of Sayyidina Maryam, she, he took responsibility because she did not have the, her father had passed away. So she, he took the responsibility to take care of Sayyidina Maryam. So he would always provide her food. Whenever he had to go out for travel, he would make sure that the food is with Maryam. And Maryam alayhi salam would dedicate herself in the ibadat. So once Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam had to go and he got late. So he had provided food for a number of days and he came late. So now he's thinking, oh my God, you know, how can Maryam eat? So when he came, he found that Maryam had unseasoned fruits. Not the seasoned fruits, unseasoned fruits. No refrigeration, no transportation. Here are fruits out of season. He got amazed. Ya Maryam, anna laki haza, where did you get these fruits from? She said, Huwa minayindillah. It's from Allah. Allah Ta'ala has given me. What are you amazed at, my uncle? Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha'u bighayri hisab. Allah Ta'ala can give risk to whoever, whatever he wants. You know when Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam, he looked at that, that Maryam can get unseasoned fruits. He was very old man, Sayyidina Zakariya. And he was, his wife was barren by that time. She could not give birth to children. But he thought, that if Maryam can get unseasoned fruits, out of season fruits, why cannot I get an out of season child? <laughs> Subhanallah. He raised his hand with dua. Ya Allah, my, my bones have become weak and my, the white hair have spread on my, and on my head. But Ya Allah, I'm not hopeless. Ya Allah, give me a child. Allah Ta'ala gave him Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam. Our Mashaykh has said that because of good desires, because of these beautiful, blessed desires of, of the mother of Maryam alayhi salam, Allah Ta'ala give this humankind two great prophets because of our desires. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam. Allah Akbar. If our thoughts become good, it not, not, we will, not only that we will be blessed, our generations will be blessed. So please, my friends, my elders, please change your thoughts. مَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيَهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Please change your thought process. Make it the, uh, the thought of Akhirat. Follow Shariat. Follow Sunnah. Please. We must learn. Ilm. Why, why, how do we do things? Why do we do things? What should be the intention? We, for that we have to sit with the company of the Mashaykh. So that we can learn niyat. We don't even know how to make niyat. We must learn how to make niyat. Follow outward sunnahs and also follow inward sunnahs. Make your character good, beautiful, loving, caring people, forgiving people, controlling your anger, controlling your desires. Please do everything for the sake of Allah. Not only you, my friends, my elders, also include your families, your wives, your children. One of the calamities is that subhanAllah, there are some men, some men who are trying to, to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe go on da'wat, on tabligh, you know, maybe go to madaris, but subhanAllah, their wives back home, in the home, they are wasting their time, gossiping, backbiting, watching dramas, you know, wasting their time, honestly, sinning in fact, not wasting, sinning. Because we have not provided environment for them so that they can also learn and develop. We to go and take bath with a sheikh, but we never encourage our wives to do the same. Our children, they are doing everything, subhanAllah, running around, not even knowing what are they are doing, and we don't even care about them. We are busy. Let's not only you change your thought process, let's also provide an environment to your wives and to your children as well. Qū anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. You save yourself from fire, Allah Ta'ala says, and also it's your responsibility, O oh men, that you must save your families from fire as well. It's the order of Allah. أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ Nara. Save yourself from fire and also you men save your families from fire. It's the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please, let's change our thought process and also let change the thought process of our families. Let's give them environment as well. Please. Otherwise, honestly, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but we are living a life of donkeys. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an as well that people who have ilm and they don't act on their ilm kamathal al-himar yahmilu aswara They're like donkeys. They're just carrying load of ilm, they're carrying the load of ilm on their backs. 
You know, it is a donkey, you put books on it, its back. Just like that, we have ilm, but it's like carrying books on our backs. We know we have to lower our gaze and we are staring. We know that we, have, we don't have to lie. We are lying. Lying is such an easy thing that comes out of our tongue. And then sometimes we speak without thinking and then later on, oh, I'm just kidding. We are not kidding, my friend, you are lying. And lying is a kabira sin. The, the, such a foul smell comes out of the tongue when people lie that the angels of mercy, they run away from that person. No protection anymore. And then we fall into calamities and who do we blame? Magic, jinns, that's all two things, very pet. Especially in this country, I've noticed, mashallah. Kisi ne jadu kar diya. Please. Right? Don't become like donkeys. This is one and number two, eating, drinking, having relations. It's only, these are the, the, the most, an animal that does it the most is a donkey. <coughs> we have become like donkeys. Prophet in one of the hadiths, he has said that the Dajjal will come riding on a donkey. What does it mean, Dajjal will be riding a donkey? These are tamasil, they are parables. It means that the environment will be like of the donkeys when Dajjal will come. And this is the environment that we have created, which is the environment of donkeys, eating, drinking, relations, jahalat. Without, despite of knowing, having information, but no action on what we know. So please, let's get out of this state of being donkeys. Let's become human beings. Let's become believers, please. Inshallah ta'ala, let's go with complete submission, 100%. Not 99%, 100%. Sunnahs, shariats. Please, let's do tawbah. Please do tawbah from the sins. Please, let's change our thought process. Kids, young men, you, all of you young friends of mine, I'm looking for you. I go to masjid, masjid to masjid, looking out for these young people. Where are these young friends of mine? I'm happy to see a few young friends here. But I don't know where are they. And Somala, there's a huge community, I'm sure. That's why there's a masjid here. And I'm sure that there are many young friends who are there watching you know, football possibly on their TVs, or surfing, chat, surfing internet, wasting their time, sinning, you know, chatting with the girls. That's what they're doing possibly right now. My friends who are here, please, at least I want all of you to stand up. And please do toba. Honestly, if all of you make a commitment today, this very moment, I will feel that, alhamdulillah, you know, my efforts have not gone wasted. And maybe I'll get the tawfiq as well as a result of your toba. Please, let's all, not only young friends, but also everybody who's old, who is young, who is whatever, you know, whichever nationality you're from, it does not matter, we're all going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's please, <coughs> let's today, tonight, let's do tawbah. With, from every single sin, change our thought process, make an irada of the akhirat, man arada al-akhirata, and then start acting on that. Wasa'alaha sayaha. Let's also start making an effort towards it. I encourage all of you, to learn ilm, you know, you have ulama in the community, go to them, ask them that, show, go, go with talab with passion, please teach us. You know, go to madaris, go to makati, whatever avenues are there, learn ilm, get to know about your basics. And I also encourage all of you, this one tradition that we have absolutely <coughs> lost, or we are losing slowly and gradually, is not that we don't take birth with mashayikh. Mashayikh of sunnah, I'm not talking of mashayikh of bidat. Mashayikh of sunnah, and they do exist. Please hook yourself up with them. Take the askar that they gave. Take it in your life on a daily basis. Zikr is the polish of the heart. Allah Ta'ala wants us to become people of zikr. Take the zikr, you know, develop yourself. Have your rabata. Whenever they, you get an opportunity, come and sit in their sohbat. Don't show your favors by going and sitting in their sohbat. They are doing a favor on you that they have come. Honestly, subhanAllah. You know, people used to travel long distances to go and sit in the sohbat of their mashayil. They will make so much an effort. And today, here are mashayikh. Now mashayikh are traveling. I've seen all of these mashayikh traveling. With the hope that maybe somebody will come and sit in their sohbat. As if the well is going from place to place and saying, you know, come and drink water. Come and drink water. You are thirsty. And people are refusing. Oh, I'm not thirsty. You know, people have become numb. Honestly, the whole brain system, nervous system is not working anymore. And well is going, my friend, you are thirsty. Please drink. He's saying, I'm not thirsty. And subhanAllah, they don't know they, that they need water and they die with dehydration. But people don't know. That's what's happening with the ummah right now. Please, 
We have also have to do this, we have to hook up with Mashaik, sit in their sohbat, show talab and passion to Allah, not to the Mashaik, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making an effort and going and spending time with them whenever they get you get an opportunity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the barakat of your talab, your niyat, your and sitting in their sohbat, inshallah Allah ta'ala will change our dead hearts and inshallah ta'ala our thought process will change and inshallah we'll start preparing for the akhirat and we'll also inshallah start acting upon that. May Allah ta'ala give all of us tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah before dua, if we can recite the kalimat of tawbah, our mashayikh have taught us a few kalimat of tawbah. It's, it's in reality, it is the tajdeed of our iman and then asking Allah Ta'ala that He forgives us of all the sins that we have done. Inshallah, recite this with sincerity, with ikhlas, with the niyat of tawbah from all the sins. Anybody wants to take bait in the silsila, they can make the niyat of bait also. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa amma ba'ad. So if you can recite these kalimat, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Amantu billahi Wa malaikatihi Wa kutubihi Wa rusulihi Wal yawmil akhiri Wal qadri khayrihi Wa sharrihi Min Allah ta'ala Wal ba'si Ba'dal maut آمنت بالله كما هو بأسمائه وصفاته وقبلت جميع أحكامه إقرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. These are the kalimat. There are few mamulat that our mashayikh have taught. If we do it with regularity, inshallah, there is a lot of barakat that comes. One is doing istighfar every day, morning, evening, hundred times each. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu ilayhi. There's a mamulat leaflet, inshallah, there's outside, you can take it on your way back, that explains that. So number one, istighfar morning, evening, hundred times. Number two, salawat on the Prophet sallallahu That's also every day, morning, evening, hundred times each. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallam. Third is reciting the Qur'an. Every day, even if it's little, but open the mushaf, recite the Qur'an, please. And number four is something called muraqaba. Muraqaba is doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart. Allah ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ Do the zikr of your Rabb in yourself, yani in your heart. So the way that our mashayikh have taught as to how to do muraqaba is that for some time during the day you close your eyes, and sit with this intention as if Allah's mercy is coming onto my heart and as if the heart is doing Allah, Allah, Allah and as if I'm listening. So don't say anything with your tongue, just focus on the left hand side of your chest, a little lower left hand side. With this intention as if Allah's mercy is coming and as if the heart is doing Allah, 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 I'm listening. 10, 15, 20 minutes of muraqaba, very powerful, very, very powerful zikr. Four mamullah, doesn't take a lot of time but subhanAllah it is the food for our ruh. You will feel a difference in yourself, inshallah. Alright, and last but not the least, please have istizhar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always know Allah is looking. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ Allah ta'ala says He is with you wherever you are. You are in your beds, in your toilet, with your friends, with your families, by yourself, wherever. Allah ta'ala is with you. Alright, please have istizars. Many times we sin because we think nobody is looking. Our shaitan comes, oh nobody is looking, let's watch this. Right? No, Allah Ta'ala is looking. Allah Ta'ala is indeed looking. Alright? Please have istizar of Allah and please follow sunnats. Every single thing sunnah way, outwardly sunnat, inward sunnas, everything done sunnah way, eating, drinking, wearing shoes, taking off shoes, coming into the masjid, leaving masjid, entering toilet, leaving toilet, everything. Please do it sunnah way. Also memorize masnoon duas as well. Inshallah, few little things but it will change your lifestyle, inshallah ta'ala, and you will feel the barakat of it in your life. Alright? Inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah we will make dua. Subhanarabbi al-a'la al-bahar. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب لا اله الا انت سبحانك انا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم ات نفوسنا تقواها وزكها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها يا ارحم الراحمين يا اكرم الاكرمين يا الله بليز اكسبت ذس جادرينج فروم اول اوف اس يا الله اول اوف ذيس بيبل هاف كم يا الله وذ طلب وذ اخلاص وذ سنسيرتي يا الله بليز بيكوز اوف ذير بريزنس يا الله اكسبت ذس جادرينج فروم اول اوف اس يا الله بليز اغنور يا الله بليز فورغيف ماي شورت كمينجز ذا لاك اوف اخلاص ذا لاك اوف اداب يا الله بليز يا الله بليز يا الله بليز دونت ديبرايف اس فروم يور فروم 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 اور اجر يا ارحم الراحمين يا الله this very moment this very night we do tawbah from every single sin that we have been doing in our lives ya allah we beg you for your forgiveness ya allah we don't give you any excuse for any of the wrongs that we have done ya allah please forgive us ya allah ya allah we make a niyat ya allah make an irada tonight ya allah we are going to dedicate ourselves our families our children hello everybody for the service of your deen ya allah we know we are not worthy we are not qabil to serve your deen but we also know that it is not about qabiliyat it is only about qubuliyat ya allah accept us for the service of your deen accept our children ya allah for the service of your deen ya allah we also beg you that in, that in this time of shar and fitna ya allah you please keep us our children our generations ya allah everybody ya allah in your protection ya allah provide us bab from your infinite prayers with barakat with afiyat with khair with wasat ya allah Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen Ya Allah, all the people who have asked for du'as You know their needs more than we do Ya Allah, we beg you that you please Fulfill their needs from your infinite prayers With barakat and afiyat, Ya Allah Ya Allah, people who are sick Spiritually or physically Please grant them perfect cure, Ya Allah Ya Allah, people who are in any sort of calamities Anywhere, Ya Allah, please Ya Allah, please remove those calamities from them Ya Allah, we know it is our own hands that have earned those calamities. Ya Allah, we beg you for your forgiveness. Ya Allah, remove those calamities, please. Ya Allah, please save our iman. Ya Allah, please save iman of our children, Ya Allah. Please save iman of every single person who is going to come until the day of judgment from our generations, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we also beg you that you give us a death of iman, a death of kalima, Ya Allah. Please make our graves from the gardens of paradise. Ya Allah, please make the questions of the graves easy for us, Ya Allah. Please fill it with noor, make it spacious. Ya Allah, please on the day of judgment raise us from amongst your muqarrabeen. Ya Allah, please give us our books in our right hands. Please give us our the share of your throne. Please give us water from the blessed hands of your beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Please grant all of us his intercession and let us all please enter into paradise without questioning, without reckoning. and give us a space in the blessed feet of your beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam and most of it all ya allah please grant all of us your perfect vision ya allah ya allah we don't know how to ask ya allah we are beggars ya allah you yourself have said that ya ayyuhan nas antum al fuqara ila allah ya allah indeed we are faqeer we are beggars ya allah and those beggars who don't know how to beg ya allah please forgive us of our lack of adab ya allah grant us the best of the dunya and the best of the akhirat without asking ya allah with khair barakat afiyat wasal allow us to use our dunya for the sake of our akhirat ya allah rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta as-sami'ul al-'alim wa tub 'alaina ya maulana innaka anta at-tawwabur rahim sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqihi sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله السلام عليكم just a quick announcement before we wrap up this program
Alhamdulillah, Sheikh has one further, uh, two further programs in London, inshallah. Sheikh will be uh, leaving uh, um, the country on Tuesday afternoon. So he's got a program tomorrow night in Leytonstone Masjid. And then during the day, he has another sister's program in Ilford. The full details, inshallah, on Hazasad's website, nuralom.com. That's N-U-R-U-L-I-L-M.com. For those people who made the intention to become a student of Sheikh Sabah to take care, they can contact him at uh, his personal email address. That's tawkir at nuralalm.com. That's T-A-U-Q-E-E-R at nuralalm.com. That's N-U-R-U-L-I-L-M.com. If anyone wants to take that email address again, they can just go to the store and the brother there will give that to you. Hazrat Sab also has a website. Um, where, as we were just mentioning, where has many of Hazrat books and magazines are on there, which you can read for free, and also the audio that Hazrat Sub's been doing over the past few years are all, have all been uploaded onto the net. You have many different courses, like courses on Imam Ghazali and on marriage courses and, and like that, which you can listen to and watch online, inshallah. And for those people who would like to keep up to date with Hazrat Sub's programs, again at the store where we're selling some of Hazrat Sub's books and magazines, you can leave your name, email address, and mobile number, and inshallah we'll keep you up to date with, in regards to Sheikh Takir Sub's programs, inshallah. And just one final announcement, just a very special jazakallah khair to the Imam Sahib, uh, Atif, the committee here, alhamdulillah, they're always very welcoming. Shall may Allah accept their efforts here, and may Allah increase them in every khair, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, and as